A shocking report by Financial Times columnist Gideon Rachman revealed North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's troops were gorging on pornography in their barracks, having never enjoyed such unrestricted access to the web, according to a usually reliable source. Just as the advent of Elon Musk's Starlink satellites transformed the lives of tribes deep in the Amazon rainforest almost overnight, many argue for the worse. The military men from Pyongyang were reportedly hooked immediately, Daily Mail says. It is noted that though full internet access is available for high-level officials and military figures in North Korea, the majority of citizens are only granted access to Kwangmyong or the Bright Star Network. This is the pariah state's only sanctioned web service and is a heavily firewalled and restricted version of the internet which does not permit access to any foreign websites, media or news services and is instead replete with state propaganda. Russia's state-run media and comms regulator Roskomnadzor also maintains an internet traffic regulation system known as TSPU, which was formalized in 2019 and requires Russian internet service providers to ensure government-supplied equipment is installed in their networks. But virtual private networks, tools that allow internet users to encrypt their data and mask their IP addresses to access sites abroad, are not yet banned and are widely used to circumvent the censors. Recall the North Korean troops in Russia have been divided into two units, one made up of assault troops and another of support troops who will organize the defense of territory captured from Ukrainian forces. There has been debate in Ukraine and among its allies about the military significance of the North Korean troops. Some officials have described their recruitment as an act of desperation by Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, whose forces continue to take territory in eastern Ukraine, but at huge losses. Others have said the decision to deploy the troops was meant to weaken Western resolve by showing that Russia remains far from isolated. The North Korean troops could also allow Russia to divert more of its forces to offensive operations on Ukrainian territory, in particular in the Donbass, where Russian troops are attempting to take as much territory as possible before the harsh winter sets in. It is not clear what Putin promised North Korean leader, if anything, in exchange for the troops. For now, American officials say they have seen no evidence of a quid pro quo. But there are concerns that Russia might provide some kind of significant military assistance that could enhance the danger North Korea poses to its neighbors and the United States. President Vladimir Putin on Thursday congratulated Donald Trump on his election victory in the Russian leader's first public comment on the outcome of the U.S. vote. Putin's comment came after a speech during an international forum conference in the Black Sea resort of Sochi. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate him on his election as President of the United States of America, Putin said in a question-and-answer session. What was said, by Trump, in the desire to restore relations with Russia, to help end the Ukrainian crisis, in my opinion, seems to deserve at least attention, Putin said. Я не хочу сейчас комментировать то, что было сказано в ходе избирательной борьбы, и я думаю, что сказано сознательно в борьбе за голоса избирателей, но не важно. А вот то, что было сказано по стремлению, стремлению восстановить отношения с Россией, способствовать завершению украинского кризиса, мне, на мой взгляд, кажется, это заслуживает внимания, как минимум. И я пользуюсь случаем, хочу поздравить его с избранием на пост президента Соединенных Штатов Америки. Я уже говорил, что, что мы будем работать с любым главой государства, которому окажет доверие американский народ. Так будет и, действительно и на практике. А если, он, а если он выполнит то, что все время сейчас говорил, вот буквально в ближайшее время до инаугурации позвонит вам и скажет, Владимир, давай встречаться. Вы знаете, я не считаю зазорным и со своей стороны ему позвонить, просто не делаю этого, потому что э, руководители западных государств э, с какого этапа, они чуть ли не каждую неделю мне звонили, а потом вдруг прекратили. Ну, не хотят, ну, не надо. 
мы, как видите, живы, здоровы, и ничего, и развиваемся, идем вперед. Если кто-то из них э, захочет возобновить контакт, я всегда говорил, хочу еще раз сказать, мы ничего против не имеем. Пожалуйста, будем контакты возобновлять и вести дискуссии. Ну, то есть с Трампом готовы повести? Готово, готово. Хорошо. South Korea's President Yoon suk yeol said Thursday he is not ruling out supplying weapons to Ukraine. Yoon said that Seoul may start with sending defensive weapons to Ukraine if it decides to provide weapons to support the country in its war with Russia. Yoon said his government will continue assessing the situation and monitor the level of North Korean troops' involvement in the war. Yoon said he also discussed North Korea's provocations including trash balloons, GPS jamming and missile provocations with the former U.S. president and now president-elect Donald Trump in a phone conference. The leaders agreed that they should meet as soon as possible, Yoon said. In response to a question about possible damage to South Korea's economy due to stronger protectionist policies under the new U.S. administration, Yoon said his government had already been making preparations to minimize any potential impact. Индоджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипанджуипандж